Good evening. Welcome to St. Elizabeth St. Bridget Parish on the third Sunday of Advent. The second collection today is for the Religious Retirement Fund. Our Mass is being offered for Thomas and Victoria Zabilia and Marie Jarecki. The Mass readings and prayers can be found on page 78 in the Missalette. Please silence all cell phones. Our entrance hymn is number 327 in the Gather Book, number 327, When the King Shall Come Again. Please rise. When the King shall come again, all his power revealing, splendor shall announce his reign, ever joy and healing, earth no longer in decay, hope no more frustrated. This is God's redemption day, longingly awaited. In the desert trees take root, fresh from his creation, plants and flowers and sweetest fruit join the celebration rivers spring up from the earth barren lands adorning God is this is your new birth mountains Greet the morning. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Come, let us rejoice in the Lord and prepare to celebrate these sacred mysteries by asking the Lord for his pardon and for his peace. I confess to mighty God. May almighty God have mercy on us Forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Kyrie eleison. Kyrie eleison. Christ eleison. Christ eleison. Kyrie eleison. Kyrie eleison. Let us pray. O God, who see how your people faithfully wait the feast of the Lord's nativity, enable us, we pray, to obtain the joys of so great a salvation and to celebrate with them always with solemn worship and glad rejoicing through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Thank you. A reading from the book of the prophet Zephaniah. Shout for joy, O daughter Zion. Sing joyfully, O Israel. Be glad and exult with all your heart, O daughter Jerusalem. The Lord has removed the judgment against you. 
He has turned away your enemies. The King of Israel, the Lord, is in your midst. You have no further misfortune to fear. On that day it shall be said to Jerusalem, Fear not, O Zion, be not discouraged. The Lord your God is in your midst, a mighty Savior. He will rejoice over you with gladness and renew you in his love. He will sing joyfully because of you, as one sings at festivals. The word of the Lord. The responsorial psalm can be found in the Gather Books, number 148. with joy and gladness for the Lord is in your midst the Holy One of Israel cry out, cry out with joy cry out with joy and gladness for the Lord is in your Savior, I will never be afraid. My strength and courage is the Lord, my Savior and my song. Cry out with joy and gladness, for the Lord is in your midst. The Holy One of Israel, cry out, cry out with joy. Give thanks and praise the name of God, sing out to all the earth, the wondrous deeds that God has done, our Savior and our song. Cry out with joy and gladness, for the Lord is in your midst, the Holy One of Israel. Cry out, cry out with joy. Shout with joy, O Zion, for dwelling in your midst is the Holy One of Israel, your Savior and your song. Cry out with joy and gladness, for the Lord is in your midst, the Holy One of Israel. Cry out, cry out with joy. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Philippians. Brothers and sisters, rejoice in the Lord always. I shall say it again, rejoice. Your kindness should be known to all. The Lord is near. Have no anxiety at all, but in everything, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving. Make your request known to God. Then the peace of God that surpasses all understanding will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. The word of the Lord.
of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to bring glad tidings to the poor. Alleluia, 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 alleluia. The Lord be with you reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. The crowd said to John the Baptist, what should we do? He said to them in reply, whoever has two cloaks should share with one person who has not. And whoever has food should do likewise. Even tax collectors came to be baptized and they said to John, teacher, what should we do? He answered them, stop collecting more than what is prescribed. Soldiers also asked him, and what is it that we should do? He told them, do not practice exhortation, do not falsely accuse, and be satisfied with your wages. Now the people were filled with expectation, and all were asking in their hearts, whether John might be the Christ. John answered them by saying, I am baptizing you with water, but one mightier than I is coming, and I am not worthy to loosen the straps of his sandals. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. His whittling fan is in his hand to clear the threshing floor and to gather the wheat into his barn but the chaff he will burn with unquenchable fire, Extort, ex exhorting them and encouraging them in many other ways. John preached the good news to the people, the gospel of the Lord. And so we see a continuation of the story of St. John the Baptist. As you heard last week in Father Celia's homily, St. John the Baptist was often compared to the Christ. It was very difficult for him in so many different ways. So many difficult, not only because of his diet, locust and wild honey, yuck, but also too because he was the forerunner. He was the one who was pointing the way. And so we see in today's gospel how John the Baptist is pointing the way and how difficult it was because what Father said last week was very true. They compared him to the Christ, but John was not the Christ, but rather the kinsfolk of Christ, a relative. So it causes us to pause and to think about how you and I are related to Christ in so many different wonderful ways. First of all, by virtue of our respective baptism, we are adopted into the family of the Lord in the Trinity and Formula. When we become infused with the gifts of the Holy Spirit and original sin is washed away. If you could remember from even last week how we begin to begin this beautiful season by commemorating the Feast of the Immaculate Conception when we call Mary the new Eve because the first woman, Eve, faltered. But it was in the plan of God that nothing should ever fall away from his eternal gaze, her sight. And so she becomes the new Eve and her Immaculate Conception is nothing other than a rejoicing in the fact that she who was conceived immaculately was indeed in the plan of the blessed Lord. And now we come to hear these words from the prophet Zephaniah. Do not be discouraged, my people. How appropriate these words are. 
even in the midst of our own societal problems, even in the midst of tragedies or illnesses or even tornadoes. Zephaniah really speaks to us in so many different ways, although it is so difficult to fully comprehend what he is saying. Do not be discouraged. Because we live in the present, but our eyes and our look is always towards the future of our life to come. And that's why we hear these words of St. Paul. I say it again, rejoice. Why does Paul say to his people to rejoice? For one singular reason. That all anxiety will give way to the promise of what Christ has in store for all of us. And so we can rejoice on this third Sunday of Advent as we come to pray. And coincidentally, as we come rejoicing here, I have to thank you all for your wonderful cards and prayers and your loving support. And I know there are many, many, many people praying for my intentions. And it's so wonderful that you're praying with great expectation as we come to celebrate this Christmas as a family united with the Lord. Also pray to Father Hilliard. Pray for him for the simple reason that he has to live with me during this particular moment of my illness and he needs a lot of patience. It's quite interesting too that it's very coincidental or can I say, and I know I'm going to get into trouble by Father Hilliard by saying this word because it's not in the Webster's Dictionary. It's a God incident that we are on the cusp of the vigil, although it is the day of the Lord, Sunday, of a great, beautiful solemnity of Our Lady of Guadalupe. It doesn't happen that very often. And what is so special about Our Lady Guadalupe? If you ever see an image of Our Lady Guadalupe, and here's your homework assignment when you go home, Google it, and you'll see some beautiful images of Our Lady Guadalupe. And what is it about Our Lady Guadalupe that coincides with this third Sunday of Advent? It's providence that it should fall on this Sunday because, again, it helps us to understand and to reflect on his holy mother under her beautiful title. Many of you know the story of Our Lady Guadalupe. And as you look at the image of Our Lady Guadalupe, you will see beautiful images of her. I want to point out three important points about Our Lady Guadalupe. While I taught geography when I was a teacher a few years ago, I now begin to think about how where Guadalupe is was really kind of in the center of North America and South America. And that's where the Blessed Mother appeared to Native Americans, to Native South Americans, to Natives who were part of the plan of God. And that's why she is under the patroness of the Americas. St. John Paul II declared Our Lady Guadalupe as the patroness of the Americas. And here's another coincidence, or is it a God incidence, or is it providential, or is it because of Father Hillier who has so many connections? Everybody knows that he is the director of the pontifical missions of the Diocese of Metuchen, and he knows many, many priests. And he called the priest up during the week and he asked this priest, Father Lyman, he says, Father Bob, you have a relic of St. John Paul II, don't you? Because not only do I have a relic, he said, yeah, but I even have a Zacchetto. Oh, can we loan, can we borrow it? I want it for this weekend so that the people of our parish can pray through the intercession of St. John Paul II for our pastor. And here we have on our altar a beautiful relic of the precious blood of a canonized saint, 
one of our favorite saints because Father He and myself met him so very often. And he blessed us with this sign of the cross on our heads and how providential it is that it is present in our midst. And not only that, there is a zucchetto. You know what a zucchetto is? A zucchetto is this. The fear that this is live streaming and Pope Francis and Bishop Cechi will be a little jealous. This is St. John Paul II's Zucchetto. Does it look pretty good on me? <laughs> don't ask me how Father Bob Lyman got it. I don't know. But this was on his head. And Father He and myself so very often celebrated the Eucharist with St. John Paul II as young priests. That's a story for another time, how Father Hillier fell asleep. It was I who fell asleep. <laughs> Why is this so wonderful to behold? Do not be discouraged. Rejoice of what the Lord has in store for us. Let's go back to Our Lady of Guadalupe. We go to Lady Guadalupe, the first point I wanted to point out that she is the center of the Americas. Mary could be the center of our lives for the simple reason is that she gave forth the great gift of human life by her saying yes, her fiat, to the Lord Jesus by bringing our Savior into the world. The second point about Our Lady of Guadalupe which St. John Paul II fervently brings out. That Our Lady Guadalupe, when you look at her image, you will see that she is a woman expecting, expecting a child. Where are we in this midst of Advent? Are you and I not expecting? We are expecting the child Jesus and we're commemorating his birth again providential that we could come together and it just so happened the reason why the native South Americans or the native Aztecs or the native people there at that time recognized that she was pregnant was because that was the traditional band that she wore around her waist that pregnant women would wear what's also amazing is that when she appeared many people began to believe. And there were countless people who were converted to Christianity and Catholicism. Now here's one last important fact. The tomb where Our Lady Guadalupe appeared on St. Juan Diego, who was canonized by our Holy Father, St. John Paul II in the year 2002 has a great, beautiful image of her that was made and embedded in his tulma. You know what that is? It was his cloak. And that cloak, because he was a peasant, was made out of some type of fiber from a cactus. And that particular fiber would only last approximately, and you can ask Father Hillier the exact details, for about 20 or 60 years but it has perdured for over 500 years now. And it is there that her, her image is embedded in his tumor and it's in the beautiful church in Our Lady of Guadalupe, the cathedral there. And you see the beautiful image of her. But there is an important point that it wasn't until discovered most recently, the last few decades that in Our Lady's eyes because you can only see it with a magnifying glass was the image of Saint Juan Diego I like to point something out about that who is Mary the mother of Jesus she's the new Eve and what is she looking at her son she sees Juan Diego, a poor peasant, as her 
son. As a mother has her eyes on her children always, so our blessed mother has her eyes on you always. Constantly, always seeking you out. Now think of it. Why does the church rejoice on this particular Sunday? It rejoices because Zephaniah, do not be discouraged. St. Paul says rejoice. And John the Baptist prepared the way of the Lord for the likes of us. And we are made princes and princesses by virtue of our own baptisms. And we have become sons and daughters of God the Most High. And so we come today respecting human life, respecting our lives, and giving thanks for the God incidences Or the providential ways he moves throughout our lives to lead us to him forever. I believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty. Thank you. Rejoicing in the Lord, we lift up our hearts in prayer. For the church in her mission to announce the good news, may God's light illuminate her path. We, pr we pray to the Lord. For an increase in religious vocations, may the Lord bless those discerning priesthood or consecrated life with generous and open hearts, we pray to the Lord. For all those who are ill, may the Lord comfort them with his healing presence, we pray to the Lord. For this faith community, as we continue our Advent journey, may the Holy Spirit bring us to a renewed awareness of God's presence in our lives, we pray to the Lord. For those injured, lost their lives, or suffered under destruction as a result of the tornadoes that bore down on several states throughout our country, we pray to the Lord. For those who have died in the light of faith, may they feast with the angels and saints in the presence of God, including Joseph Rizzo, Dermot Dunphy, and Reverend Vincent Corneo retired priest of the Diocese of Metuchen. And at this Mass, we remember Thomas and Victoria Sevilla and Mary Jarecki. 
and for the prayers we hold in the silence of our hearts, we pray to the Lord. Almighty God and Father, graciously hear the prayers of the family who have gathered here before you. We beg you to increase their faith, strengthen their hope in the love of Christ our Lord. Our offertory hymn is number 340, People of the Night, number 340. Before we sing the offertory, I just want to explain to you that at the end of Mass tonight, you can come up and venerate the holy relic of St. John Paul II. I ask you because of, you know, you know, COVID, you know, just to keep your distance, you could come up and you could look at the relic, okay, and whisper a little prayer by making the sign of the cross, all right, and for all of your special intentions, all right? So that's what we'll do at the end of Mass. Both Father Hilly and myself will remain here. You just come up and venerate the holy relic, okay? Good. Thank you. We could start the offertory hymn. We are your people of the night. We long to see your newborn light. Distant glimmer rising from afar. in hope to see ahead the springtime and the gift that is to come. Come and save us, be God's only Son. You wait for us, you are our choice, the living word, the saving voice. Break the silence, listen to our call. Be our answer, new life for us all. Give us new faith, give us the joy as we await your Son, the Lord. In our presence, child born of your breath, save your brother life that shatters death. We are your people of the night. We long to see your newborn light, distant glimmer rising from afar. Pray. That my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, our Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice that you have made. May the sacrifice of our worship, Lord, we pray, be offered to you unceasingly to complete what was begun in this sacred mystery and powerfully accomplish for us your saving work, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with Lift up your hearts. Amen. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, right it is truly right and just. It is our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, <clears throat> through Christ our Lord. For he assumed that his first coming, the lowliness of human flesh, and having fulfilled the design you formed long ago, opened for us the way to eternal salvation. 
that when he comes again in glory and majesty and all at last is made manifest, we who watch for that day may inherit the great promise for which we now dare to hope. And so with the saints and the angels, we sing the hymn of glory and without end we acclaim. Holy, 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 Said the sea who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna in the highest. <clears throat> you are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Holy Spirit upon them, like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took the bread, said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and to minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, that we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with our Pope, our Bishop, and all the clergy, Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles, and with all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen, 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 amen. 
Savior's command. Informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may always be free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace in unity in accordance with your holy will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord I am not worthy that you should enter the right but only say that my soul shall be saved. Communion hymn is number 833 in the Gather Book, number 833, now in this banquet.
God who makes the blind to see, God who makes the lame to walk, bring us dancing in today, lead your people in your word. God of agonies, daybreak to night, lead us to justice and us compassion, strength for the day, wisdom to walk in your way. Oh, for the hopeless, light for the blind, strong is your name, Lord, gentle and kind. journeys, daybreak to night, lead us to justice and love. Grant us compassion, strength for the day, wisdom to walk in your way. Call us to be your light, call us to be your love, make us your people again. God of our journeys, daybreak to night, lead us to justice and light. Bring us compassion strength for the day, wisdom to walk in your
Let us pray. We implore your mercy, O Lord, that this divine sustenance may cleanse us of all of our faults and prepare us for the coming feasts through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us prepare to celebrate the birth of our Lord as we enter Advent and prepare for Christmas. Join us for adoration on December 18th and December 22nd. See the bulletin for details. Please take home a copy of the bulletin along with the Catholic Spirit and the Father McGivney prayer packet. Thank you. Thank you for reading. Thank you to our altar server, Henry, and uh, thank you to Ian in the back over there. And again, I want to thank all of you for your loving support and prayers. Keep them going. I really appreciate it. And uh, next weekend, Father Hilly and myself, so next Saturday, if you see, don't see us, next weekend, Father Hilly and myself have another prior obligation. So a friend of mine will be coming, Father Joe Curry. I think he's on the schedule. So don't think, you know, something happened to me right away, you know? So, right? so as I said, you could come up. And uh, I have to give you a final blessing. Come up and venerate the relic. Just, you know, try to keep your distance and just look at it. Don't, no offense, don't start kissing it or anything like that, all right? All right. The Lord be with you. May the blessings of Almighty God descend upon you and remain with you. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. amen. St. John Paul II, pray, pray for, for us. us. Go in peace. Thanks be to God. Please join us Thank singing you for our recession the relic. Hymn. Thank you to Father Hillier for getting us the relic. Really appreciate it, right? Thank you. Our recessional hymn is number 320, The King Shall Come When Morning Dawns, number 320. Come quickly, King of Kings. 